Hey folks, we are back here once again. Welcome back to another review. Hope you enjoyed my final review video of me showing off uh, Cobra Kai Season 1 and 2 of that and Beetlejuice, which I just watched those already and I enjoyed them. Oh, no. You can see me well. Ah, sorry. This webcam. I'm just very picky with it. No, I think it's I think it's fine, it's a little quirky, but you guys can still see me, right? Okay, I don't wanna be in the whole video messing with it. But anyway guys. Welcome back to another Superman review, or well, this time it's gonna be a rant, well epic rant, but that'll be the title of it, but yeah. Now finishing up with the Christopher Reeve Superman films. Yes, I did read Superman the movie, Superman 2. There's a John Cut Superman 3, Supergirl. Now I'm getting to the last Christopher Reeve Superman film. Uh, Supergirl was a spinoff, but Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Yes. Yeah, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Yeah. Yeah. What can I say about this movie that has not already been said? Well, I'll say right now that this is my opinion and I'm not alone because I know a lot of people hate this movie. I, I'm going to be honest, I hate this film. I watched it, prepared for this review, and it's, <laughs> I hate the, the quote, the late Roger Ebert, I hate, 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 hated this movie. I hate it. It's freaking trash. I, I hate this film with a passion. I mean, today this is the worst Superman film. Yes, and I still have two more Superman films, going to bring Superman Returns of Man Still. People hate Man of Steel, but you know what? You need to watch this again. For those that hate Man of Steel out there, for those that do, and I know some people that do, I dare you to watch this again. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why some people don't like Man of Steel. I like Man of Steel, but it's not about that. But Superman for the Quest for Peace, this film, or the Quest for Shit is what I call it. I hate this movie. <laughs> Just with a passion, but I gotta talk about it. I'm going to review it and rant on it because it is part of the Superman franchise. So, and I know for the Superman Mar for I mean Superhero Marathon, there will be more rants along the way, down the line. So, but here we go. So let's get into Superman Four, how it came to be. In 1983, following the mixed to reception to Superman Three, and also since Supergirl, you know, which came out in 1984 after Superman Three, didn't Supergirl flopped at the box office? Superman Three did well at the box office, but it, the, the the reaction was pretty much dis disappointing to the film. And I would still say Superman Three is better. Superman Three is a masterpiece. It's better than this. Now, all that being said, I think even. I think Batman and Robin is even better than this. No. Yeah. That's just my opinion. But we're not getting into that. That will be for the Batman Marathon, so I'm not going to get into that. But anyway, in 1989, following the mixed re negative reaction to Superman 3, Raven, the producers, as an aside on his son Eli, who first brought the rights for Superman and gave us Superman the movie. It's, as soon as the, the films have run their course, Reeve was slated to make a cameo in 1984 Super Bowl about out early on, and the film was a box office failure. Two years later, Alkine sold the Superman franchise to Golden and Golden and Canon Films. They, hooked, they sold it to Canon Films. Uh, and Canon des desperately needed this film. Sorry, they desperately needed this film because they made movies like Bloodsport, I think, in Beijing, USA. I making. I think they made Life Force. Uh, yeah, they made some other movies as well, but I, I basically just know both of them, I think, and the Missing in Action films, I think. But I think from what, from, from what I heard from Canon is, at this time, this was a company that their movies were not doing well at the box office. Their films were flopping at the box office. They also came out with Masters of the Universe at this time. So... I heard that their films are doing well. They plan to make a Spider-Man movie as well. And also, there were plans to make a Superman 5 after this, but those were scrapped after this film flopped. And, you know, Spider-Man never came to be until Sam Raimi got his hands on it. Well, until, you know, years later. Yeah. But pretty much after Superman 4 flopped and, you know, all that, I think Cannon went out of business. Maybe, I, I'm not sure, but I reckon they would. Uh, originally, it was just Craven hired to do canon films to the right film, but he and Christopher Reeve did not get along well. Well, Christopher Reeve, 
Now, he was not in Supergirl. I think he should have been in Supergirl, but he wasn't. He bowed out of the movie because of Superman 3. He didn't. At this time, Christopher Reeve didn't want to play Superman no more. So, in order for him to get the tights back on, Cannon made a deal with him. They offered him, I think, I was watching all the Hobbit's review of this film. Um, he talked about the making of the film is that they paid me, I think, $4 million to come back to wear the Superman suit again, to wear the tights again, to come back as Superman for this film. And uh, the rest of the cast did not want to be in this movie either, but Christopher Reeve was able to talk them in to be in this movie, Gene Hackman included, who came back as Lex Luthor, Murray Kiddo, Jackie Cooper, Mark McClure, Jimmy Olsen, you know, he got all, they were all behind Christopher Reeve and behind him on the film, and Christopher Reeve got to do the story for the film. And I guess my Wes Craven didn't agree on the movie, and Reeve demanded that a new director be brought in. So, there was, and of course, then they started making this film. And it was a rushed production. You can tell a lot of Superman for War was a rushed film. You know. Yeah. The production of Superman 4 began in, 1980, in 1986, and his other biography, filming, Reeve described filming the movie. Well, he also did another movie with Ken at this time, I think, or I think it was before. It was a uh, Street Smart, which didn't do well at the box office either, but Morgan Freeman got praised for his performance. But Christopher Reeve started in that movie too. We were also hampered by budget, contracts, and cutbacks in all departments. Canon Films had nearly 30 projects in the works at the time, and Superman 4 received no special consideration. So, for example, Corner and Will, I can't say the name, I wrote a scene with Superman Films on 42nd Street. There were a lot of scenes cut out of this movie. Richard Donald would have choreographed hundreds of pedestrian vehicles and cut to people walking out of all windows of the side of Superman walking down the street like the popular. Like the pipe, pipe, pipe. I said, we had to shoot an show part, England of the Rain, with about 100 extras, no corn inside. I know there were some extra scenes of like, the only best way I can describe them, I know it was a scene where nuclear man cannot blaze it, he's brought him to Lex Luthor and they're talking or whatever, and I think Superman finds the kid Jeremy in space, goes visit him at school, and visits him, I think, another time, and flies him into space. Oh yeah, people can fly into space in this movie and they don't die. You don't have to wear a space suit in this movie. You know, you, you'll be fine. <laughs> you know. Soon as childhood home on the... Uh, oh. Come, Tom Trey said that the scene is example of Cannon's budget sliding. According to Russell, the urban director Ferry begged to be able to film that sequence in New York in front of the real headquarters of the United Nations because everyone knew they looked at the Niven Kiel setting looking nothing like them, but Cannon refused. According to Rosnitz, they were pinching pennies at every step. Superman's childhood home small was built on farmland outside Berwick in North Hitch. Even though the original set for Superman the movie was still in Canada. According to John Cryer, who played Lex Luthor's nephew at Lenny, we had taken him aside just before the release and told him it was going to be terrible. Although Cryer enjoyed working with Reeve and Hackman, Cryer claimed that Cannon ran out of money during the production of the released an unfinished film. That's what this movie is. It's unfinished and it's lazy. You know, as soon as, in my opinion, as soon as the Soul Kinds stopped, you know, being involved with the Superman films, because those guys had the money to put, they had the money, they had the budget, they had the money to put on the screen, you know. And when they were gone, you know, and you're giving the, the movie Superman to a company that is failing, <laughs> is not doing well, you know, they're just trying, in my opinion, Cannon was just trying to make Superman to save their own asses, you know, and it didn't work. There were the later following scenes, including, I think, a test reading, where I think, uh, in fact, Nuclear Man that appears in the film is actually a second Nuclear Man and Luther created. Cut scenes are featured in the original Nuclear Man. Oh, yeah, there was, like, Clyde Mantle. There was, like, I swear, it was, like, a rock star Nuclear Man, and that scene was, like, stupid, you know. Outside of the, there was a Metro Club where Lacey and Clark go to ruin a date. I could really care less about that. You know, the first thing was somewhat more inhuman looking. It was kind of like he's bizarre in a way, but there's nothing like bizarre about him. You know, because bizarre is deformity and doesn't have fingernails, really fingernails to threaten him with. Yeah. Not all the weird scenes made to the deluxe edition. I think there were like a couple good deluxe scenes on here which I can't watch, which are really, you know, there's additional scenes in just the trailer, so this has no making of. I'm like, wow. And I think it was also the lead scene in the film where Lacey's leaving Metro, I mean, she's leaving Metropolis and her and Clark share a kiss. 
Yeah. The film I believe also has a comic book adaption, which I've never read. Joel is in the book himself, much like in the first one. The comic features the battle with the fellow prototype of Nuclear Man, resembling Bizarro. It has a short ending with Superman and Jeremy flying above her, observing the planet. It is in reality just one world. Rather than the divided world, we see a man ma ma made map. Jeremy is seen over the space suit, but in the movie version, she is not wearing any protection of any kind. As with Lacey, Wolf, or yeah, they don't have no space, so, I mean, you better have a space suit in space because you're going to die. <laughs> we can't survive in space. There's no air in space for us. There's no way to breathe in space, you know. Yeah. A human can't survive that, but the cast of the movie is Christopher Reeve as Kelly Oak, Clark Kent Superman, Gene Hammond as Lois Luthor. He also provides the voice for Nicholas Man by Mark Pillow as Nicholas Man, who was, I guess, a model or something. Uh, this guy right here, who was definitely, yeah, he wasn't a good actor, and I'm like, I'm glad he never went far in Hollywood because the guy can't act, and you can tell why they took his voice. Probably because he can't act worth the damn. You know, thank God he never went to movies. Jackie Cooper as Perry White, Mark McClure as Jimmy Olsen, John Clark as Wendy Luther, Lex as uh, nephew, Sam Winnicott as David Wolfer, Mo Hemingway as Lacey Wolford. I remember her, I think. One of the movies seen her was Delirious with the late John Candy. Yeah, definitely a better movie. Margaret Kidder as Lois Lane. Devin McCoy as Jeremy, Lane Hookins, Jim Brennan, Stanley Looper, Don Fellows, Robert Petty as U.S. President, Susan York as the Wars of the War. She also played, you know, the mother in the other films, you know. But here she's just a voice, so. And the film is directed by Sidney J. Ferry. I don't think he directed any other superhero films. I don't know too much about him, but I guess he's never directed any superhero films before. Before, you know, that. I think maybe a couple of horror movies or something like that. Or so, I don't know if it's a horror, but apparently I don't think the guy knew what he was doing when he made Superman 4. You know. But he does continue to direct other movies, I, I guess. But the movie is produced by Menem Gwen Yorm Corbis. Screenplay is by Lawrence Conner, Mark Ruslow. It's stories by Christopher Reeve, Lawrence Conner, and Mark Ruslow. It's based on Superman created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. The music score is by Alexander Crouch, Alexander Courage. The cinematography is by Ernest Day, edited by John Shirley. Production company the Canon Group Inc. It's distributed by Warner Brothers United States. It was released July 24th, 1987 here in the United States. It's 90 minutes long. It's pretty much the shortest Superman film. The budget was $17 million and the box office made $36.7 million. Now it did kind of surpass that budget, but slightly. It's still, I still would say it's a flop. Because Superman 3 <laughs> made more money. Superman the movie Superman 2 made more money. This film didn't make any money. You know, you can say Supergirl was a flop too, but at least Supergirl tried. This film doesn't try at all. And Superman 4 is also considered one of the worst superhero film, films ever made. Yeah. And it took 19 years to make another Superman film, which was Superman Returns in 2006. So, you know, it took a while just to make another superhero film. Anyway, I'm going to mention the plot synopsis. And then we'll talk about the movie itself, and then I'll give you my final opinion on this film. Yeah. Pretty much the plot for Superman for the quest for peace is that the plot is that the same United States and Soviet Union engaged in a nuclear arms race that could lead to Earth's destruction. Superman decides that he must take action. He collects all the nuclear warheads from the world from the world and throws them into a spa and throws them into space. Meanwhile, Superman's nemesis Lex Luthor has broken out of prison with a new scheme, with the help of his nephew, Lenny, played by John Cryer. His, he clones Superman with radioactive material to create a nuclear man, which gets the strain of his hair, a being just as powerful as the Man of Steel. And Superman, of course, has to, you know, 
defeat New Golden Man and take him down before he hurts more people and or kill somebody. So Superman has to take him on and stop Lex Luthor, you know, once and for all. So that's a part of the nutshell for this movie for you. Yeah. Well, I like that picture right here. Maybe they did ever seen that movie where Clark is back in Smallville and he's is a picture here of him at Jonathan Kent's grave. You know, you know, remember Jonathan Kent? You know, his biological father that passed away in the first movie. I'm like, that would have been a great scene to add in. <laughs> but let's talk about Superman's little quest for peace itself. So of course, when the movie opens, we get the opening credits, which. I will admit the music score is good. They do put some John Williams score in the film that does feel like Batman Superman, and then some of the rest of the music score in the film I don't like, but I'll get to that later. You know, but we get the opening credits, which I thought the opening credits, in my opinion, were just lazy for this movie. I just, again, this is just a lazy film, you know. But anyway, the film pretty much starts out with a Russian space station that is. Flying in space or doing work, you know, and this is where, well, well, in the movie where, when a Russian guy singing, yeah, like I want to hear that in the opening of a Superman movie, a guy, a Russian guy singing with subtitles, and I'm like, can't understand what the world he's saying. I'm like, this probably would have been annoying movie theater shit back in '87 if I was alive, because most of those movie theaters, the subtitles just, the subtitles just annoy me, especially if I'm in theaters, you know, it would annoy the heck out of me. I'm like. And of course, the space station gets hit by a rock or something in space, gets a, into a bump. And of course, you know, one that's another thing. He's falling on space like, oh, and this, 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 the space station is rolling around. And, and this is where Superman comes in, flying in. And I swear, you know, you got him flying into the camera, and the effect is horrible. It's like I think five or eight times in the movie where he's flying into the camera. It's very closely, and the effect is horrible. You know, and Superman saves, you know, well, of course, saves the shuttle first, the space shuttle, and of course, goes far as like, better sing in here when he tells him in Spanish. I didn't know this, though, but Martha Kent has passed away, but I didn't mention that, so we see Clark go to Small World to his old home. And I guess he's going to get ready to sell his home, but he has to... This movie also has nods to the original, like, with the Green Crystal, which is a nod to the first movie, and a nod to Superman 2. I'm like, really? One thing I like about Superman 3, in good case that movie, you don't need every nod to the original films, you know. You don't need to make nods. This film does it so many times. And it makes the nods with the crystal that will save your life when you need it, and I'm like, another crystal, which was already gone when you used it in Superman 2. The Richard Donner Code, which in the, the original Superman 2 was, was already done. So I guess there's another crystal. His mother's like, the voice of Laura, Superman's uh, mother. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Kent was his adopted father, by the way. But anyway, Laura is his biological mother, telling him, once you take the crystal out of this chamber, out of the, um, out of the, your, your spaceship, you know, the one baby that he, as a baby when he came to Earth, you know, you'll be truly alone. And he sees it, and he sees that the guy's pulling up, I guess a friend of Jonathan Kent's, old friend of Jonathan Kent's. And Superman has these strange powers in this movie, too. He has different powers. Here, he can do things with his mind. I swear, when that guy pulls up, when he's able to use his X-ray vision and see the guy coming, he just, you know, makes the ship disappear or something. At least thing he did to me. Because of that, of course, he puts on the usual Clark Kent routine, you know, Says, I'm not going to sell it to this guy. You know, anybody that wants his farm needs to wants to be a rural farmer. You know, loves farming. He's like, you're, Clark, you're stubborn. He's like, Clark, you are a baby. And saying about that, uh, the, you know, they show up at baseball, you know, close up the baseball bat and he can't hit it, which, of course, is the whole joke with him being bumbling. I mean, with him being just bumbling and lazy and he can't really hit a curveball. It, it's not really, but. Then after that, I will remember this cool scene when he picks up the baseball, and then, whoosh, I'm like, that was cool. And then I think we go back to the, before we go back to the Daily Planet, we go, uh, we, like, Luther and Joe, he makes these whistle noises, 
and then his uh, nephew Lenny. So we don't have Otis and why did Miss Otis Ned Betting? I wish he would have been in this movie, but I guess he didn't want to be. Can't blame him. But Lenny comes in here and Lenny is annoying. I'm sorry, I like Jim Cry. He's in Supergirl the TV show now. And I'm sure he'll be in season six as well. As um Lex Luthor and that show button and here he's Lenny Luther, he's his nephew, he's like, Yo dude, what's up? You know, man. He's just an annoying character. Uh, these cops are straight, but he comes up to him and goes like, Dude, can you tell me where this city's at? And he's like, No, you're going, wrong, you're going the wrong way, boy! You know, he's like, Well, this is a cool car. The cop's getting there. He's got like a radio where he can, like, kind of control the car. He flies him over there. The, the car really wrecks. The car just makes a jump, you know. And the cops end up okay. Lex sparks up his like, Yo, Uncle Lex has one thing on his mind. And him and Lenny say, Destroy Superman, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also have the Lacey character comes in her and her her father who complained that well y'all don't make any more sorry this is not too good now y'all don't make any more money so. They pretty much want to turn the Daily Planet into a place where they're selling pictures for bimbos, for slutty women, I guess. So they're trying to turn the Daily Planet into like a porn newspaper or something, I guess. That's what they're trying to do. Well, she's playing is, I'm like, this company has made no money, and maybe Dave is making money. My Daily Planet has probably been around for these movies the whole time, so you can't tell me they have not made any money. They've been in business ever since I've been watching these movies. So it's ridiculous. It's a stupid plot. Yeah. And, you know, they throw us in a perfect Clark King goes up to Lacey, and, of course, Lacey falls for him. So, she is nothing in this movie but a filler character just to fall in love with Clark Kent. She's just nothing but a love interest for Clark Kent, and that's it. There's nothing to a character. You know. And her and Lois, she's like, well, it's not like when he's cute. Like, Clark won't go for you. He's just the oldest living boy scout I know. He's not going to fall for you. I'm like, well, he's going to fall for me. Men like me because I'm rich. You know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Uh, of course, when Alex Luther also was able to, he breaks into a museum, or goes to the museum, you, you know, where they say that Superman gave Shannon his hair to the museum. Lex, you know, has got the cutter or whatever, whatever, you know, I don't know what you call it, but he breaks his glass, just smashes his glass, and is able to cut and get Superman's strand of hair. I'm like, and the alarm is going off. I'm like, now my issue with that, you can say it's a nitpick, but I have an issue with it. I'm like, how the heck can you just break into a museum, just smash a window and one's go off and nobody hears it? Yeah, nobody hears it, so... Alright, so I guess you can just go to a museum and smash a window and just take something and... I don't know why no cops will come get you because people will just take with the alarm going off. But anyway, we get back to Lacey where she's trying to seduce Clark. She... Well, he orders him to come to the office, well, tells him to come. She's sitting on her desk while she's posing for Playboy or something, trying to get close attention. Yeah, and it's not working. And meanwhile, you know, they say that I think we find out that, you know, the world that is, you know, since the Soviet Union and Mason engaged in a nuclear war, we're starting to survive the planet. And then there's this kid named Jeremy, and then there's this teacher who their acting sucks. Heck, my little. My daughter Ray Walk Up can do better acting than them. Because I think their voices are dubbing. It's terrible. And I don't know about the super crisis. What should we do about it? And Jeremy's like, I tell you what I do. I was shooting that we do something about it. I'm like, I just didn't realize Superman didn't say yes. You know, and they send that letter. Jeremy sends that letter. And of course, they use it for popularity. He's like, he's just a kid. Well, you know, we need to listen, we need the money, so Jeremy speaks for him and says, you know, I just couldn't even feel like Superman wouldn't say yes, Jeremy is annoying. Anyway, this is my problem with this movie. So far right now, not only is it gotten just boring and stupid, the plot is stupid as well. The story of Superman trying to get involved in the most problems. He can't do that. If I remember Superman in the movie, the standard version when he's talking to Joe Rell, Joe Rose says, you cannot solve all the world's problems. Superman cannot solve all the world's problems. He's here to help to fight for truth, justice, and the American way. He's not here to solve all the world's problems. 
you know, Superman is not here for that. But anyway, Superman, of course. Oh, of course, by the way, you see this scene here. Yeah, we get the freaking Fortress of Solitude back. Okay. We don't see it after Superman 2. It's not Superman 3 at all, but Superman 2, which is Donna Cut, if you remember. Superman destroyed the Fortress of Solitude, but now we're seeing it in this film. I know it was for the Richard Donna Cut, but still, Superman, you know. You know, even though Richard Donna came later, but okay. <laughs> I guess he rebuilt it, you know. And he's talking to the council. His mother just says, listen to them. And they say, you know, you should go to this, you should go to another planet, let them destroy themselves. It's not your responsibility. It is not Superman's responsibility to take care of the world's problems. Superman is not a god, he cannot solve all the world's problems. Having Superman do that is like stupid. Superman can't do that. You know, that, that I'm sorry, Scott Bell Reeve, I'm sorry, Christopher Reeve, I love you, Superman. But even his performance is off in this movie. Anyway, I'll get to that later, but. You know, we'll be on the top because one of the men, you know, one of the Kryptonians faces say, Betrayed! 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 You know, say that for real. So Superman goes to the United Nations and he says, As of now, I'm going to get rid of all the nuclear warheads for this world. I'm going to put them space. I'm like, What? So stupid. <laughs> and also, you know, he's feeling so sad that he talks to Lois. And he just says, oh, send me some fresh air. So they go up, he jumps, and they go in front of the fly. So just like Superman the movie, which they try to redo in a horrible way. I mean, they're flying, you hear the music again, but it's in daylight. And you can tell it's blue screen. I mean, the cinematography, the editing, for, the cinematography, the effects for this movie, the cinematography is awful. It is just awful. And he lets go of those. So instead of falling, like, oh, she usually would in the first movie. She can fly now. She just... But she's not falling, she's flying, so Lois Lane can fly in this movie. Yeah, but Superman catches her back up, and I'm like... Yeah. And, of course, you know, they have a little like, you know, I'm going to talk to Lois, she's like, oh, I remember everything about you. So she remembers in Superman 2 who he really is. He's kal son of Krypton. She knows that now and knows who he is. And then, of course, and just like they not Superman 2, the original Superman 2, Lester Cut. He gives Lois a magic kiss. And again, she... Like, oh, what if I do that show? So she forgets again. I'm like, so Superman can use her like that, I guess. Okay, every time he has a problem, all he has to do is take off his damn glasses, take her out for a fly, fall with her a bit, go on a little date with her, and then, oh, well, Brandon, I just need you not to remember me. I'll just magic kiss you again. So he can use her like that. And speaking of magic kiss again was stupid. Now, in the first movie, it's silly. But you know what, that scene in Superman 2 was genuine, you know, it was just a really good scene in that movie because they play off the one here, they don't play off it very well. It is just forced and I'm like, it's just bad writing and I'm like, magic kissing and I'm like, really? <laughs> it's bad enough for Richard Nardcott that he can fly around rolling him, but magic kissing her is just even bad too. Again. <laughs> And of course, Superman afterwards, like when he goes to the United Nations, says, I'm going to take care of this. He does one of he grabs the warheads, puts them in a bag. Like, it's, it's almost like a big airbag in space. He's able to tie it up, you know, just roll around and throw it in the sun. Uh, Lex Luthor, who talks to the these war criminals, but who are in charge of doing warheads and are trying to start this war in the Union, he makes a deal with them to make money to make world profits, you know, to, to they continue starting their war while he's making money to the side. And he's like, he tells them that he's going to create, you know, a nuclear man. And so, the one of them go with him. He pretends, Luther pretends, Luther pretends, Luther pretends to be a general. And, of course, he's able to get it, the, the missile to fly in space. And, of course, it creates nuclear man, you know. Nuclear man is created. He's born out of the sun. He just puts up his like, thirty fan nose. He's like, and flies off the earth, and he meets, Lex Luthor's like, good, you know, I created you, I can't destroy, he's like, you are blind, are you? And then Gene Hammond was in, I didn't care about Nuclear Man. Oh, when Nuclear Man is, when it's not the sun, yeah, the sun, which gives his powers, when there is no sun, when Pat Nuclear Man is around the sun, he's like this. He's like really cold, you know, he's, the sun gives him his energy, he's basically useless with that, so therefore he's a useless villain. 
I'm sorry, if I want to see Superman fight some threats, I'll see Superman 2 and Superman 2 the Richard Donner, because you know what? Because Z General Zod, Nun, and Ursa, Ursa and Nun, they were a threat. They're more of a threat. Yeah. And at least they can act. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Karen Stamp, Sarah Douglas, and Jack O'Hurlin, I can't say it, I'm sorry if I can't say his name right, they were better, because they're better actors. They know how to act. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. He says, we're going to destroy Superman. Sorry if I'm forgetting about this thing, but this movie isn't very memorable in my opinion, so. say that Superman told the schoolboy to drop dead, which wasn't true. I'm sorry, it was a gigantic net, you know, that he had. Plan is like double day with Clark Kent and Superman, and this scene was just like ridiculous to watch. Again, this one was just so boring. You know, Superman, you know, he has to go in the covers. Clark Kent first come to the door and said, Hey, let's see, you know, she's got the dress on. He's like, Not stressed. I said, like, Oh, I can go pay the cab driver. And then he comes over to Superman and says, Hi, I was gonna start to blow us a little bit. And by using his powers, by using his vision, from again, controlling it with his brain, I guess. With his mind can you know turn the heat up on the, in the oven, make the turkey go crazy. The is go like, oh, that was it. And then he goes back as Clark Kent. And he's like, all right, we're gonna go back up there. And then of course he does his whole lazy thing though with coming back. But it's just not really funny. It's just more stupid. And he flies back as Superman. You know, goes back. There's a Lois. I'm out here, and it's just kind of like back and forth for a bit. And then he goes back as Clark Kent again from to the front door. And then he's got the, we got the hearing, like, in Superman the movie when, uh, when Lex Luthor got Superman's attention. There's a hearing again. And he's starting to go up building for the people, so Superman's like, what are you up to? And he's like, you know, you're the good guy 24-7. You need to just take a break. And he's like, get, but get some children or something, or have a puppy or a pet. Mm -hmm. Take a break. He's like, children, you know, like, well, Luthor, you have children and a pet. What's your little what mind up to? It does, uh, you know, war profits, you know, to do more of these warheads and for his own gain. And then, of course, a nuclear man shows up, and I swear, I don't know, it probably could Gene Hammond want to do this, because he does a voice, you know, as soon as a nuclear man shows up with this heat, because he's, like, he's like the walking heat of energy, he's like this, he's voice that Superman, he's like, you know, <laughs> he's like, first I have fun, you know, destroy Superman. And they both fight. And the fight is pretty lame. All they do is have a little tussle fight. We got some bad editing and bad noises going on in there. If they're editing these noises, they're terrible. And the effects of the daylight is just terrible. You know. And they're both flying around. Uh, instead of getting to a big fight with Superman, all this stupid villain, nuclear man, this lame villain just flies away and just go cause chaos, I think. He tries to destroy like these buildings in this country. Superman saves the lady from falling. Then he's able to use like some heat vision or some some powers from his eyes to make buildings go back up again. So when a building is damaged, he can just zoop, use his eyes and bring it back up. I'm like, okay, that's a new power. I'm like, makes no sense, but okay. Then he tries to destroy a volcano. I mean, destroy a volcano. Superman, you know, goes to Mount Everest. You know, uses heat vision to get the Mount Everest building off to cool it down. And then he goes down and uses his freeze breath, which is horrible effects. Tells him bye. And then him and a nuclear man in great threat is his curly fingernails just, you know, he just try to cut Superman and him and Superman fighting. And I'm like, really? And it's just horrible effects of his nuclear energy going off. It's just horrible. And the suit looks very cheesy. I'm going to say it's cheesy and it's stupid to look at. Mm. 
And again, this time he goes to fly. Well, he puts Superman on ice and Superman breaks over the ice. I forget when, I don't really care. But he, they go to New York City, which is Metropolis, but Metropolis is not New York City. You know, I also had that issue of the Richard Donner cut, but that fight was not the best I did, but, you know, it still at least was better than this. At least there were some good kicks and punches in there. And here, no, here the man just grabs the whole thing, the Statue of Liberty, to chop it on people, and Superman grabs it, goes to put it back, and here the man walks behind him. You know, shh. You know, and cut, and, and cuts him with his fingernails, you know, and Superman's like, oh, 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 you know, and, you know, he's getting in there, and he just kicks him, and Superman's like, so, by a villain that has curly fingernails, he's taking down, oh, because it's nuclear energy, I'm like, no, it's stupid. That really Superman, there's, that, that can take him down? Really? <laughs> oh, and it made him sick. The energy from the sun. Why would the sun make him sick in the first place? Superman gets his power from the freaking sun. This should be a damn easy villain for him to fight. <laughs> this movie just doesn't make any sense, and Superman or Clark is at home just sick. Yeah. Honestly, whatever else is going on in this movie, I just don't care about. I really do not care. Uh, Superman is sick. He always comes around telling him that she's going to quit the day of the planet because they took Superman's... When when Superman kicked him, his cape fell off, so they took Superman's cape, and she's like, how can you do that? She's like, go to the cape, and she's like, Daddy, stop it! You know. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention there was a scene where Ray Sam and Superman are... I mean, Ray Sam and Clark are working out, you know, they're exercising, and that's a little funny. But then when they, this guy calls him Clarky and says, no pain, no gain, he gets them back by picking up, by picking up this even bigger weight and pushing all the, the guys like, hey, man, but no pain, no gain. That was the only clever scene in the movie. You know, that was the only thing that made me laugh, that made me laugh. But then when we get back to the story, Lois comes to tell him that, you know, she tries to do the same word. They make it, they try to make it genuine. Like, I love them, but the film just doesn't work. At this point, you just, I don't really care. But then after that, um, apparently, you know, he gets older, and you believe he's becoming, like, older and stuff. He's becoming, like, an old man with white hair, and he grabs a green crystal to get better, you know. And that's it, you know. He's like, and that's what it can do, he's just making him better, he's just healing him from being sick. And, uh, a new man, apparently, you know, well, well, it's something I have a mission, who, uh, in this scene, right here, has all this money now. And yeah, this is where Gene Hammond was being over the top. Where he's like, now that he has everything under control, he's like, well, you know what, I'm going to take the new rewards from you, I'm going to get the money for myself. So you know what, as I'm taking your, taking your business, she was still laughing, he was like, no, I'm serious. He's like, you're fired, get out of here! You know, it was like, it was like, what can you do, you know, you took down Superman, what do I have to fear, you know? Um, but then, you know, after seeing Superman sick, we get back to New England Man, who pretty much just out of nowhere has the hot for Lacey, just all of a sudden, you know, comes back to life because of the sun, because he was trained for a while, but, you know, when he comes back to life, he looks at a picture of her, and then he just develops a crush on her, and wants to make her his mate, just for no reason, <laughs> you know, just so she can be a damsel in distress now, I guess. New England Man goes to fly over there, and of course Superman is like, you, you want the girl, you can't have the girl. He's like, give me the girl, I will hurt people. First of all, he was just sick. He was an old man, he was dying. Next thing we know, he's okay back there. And how does he know that he's talking about Lacey? How does he know? <laughs> it makes no sense. You know, it makes zero sense, this movie. But anyway, he tries to destroy people a little more, and he's able to get, you know, with more shitty effects on the way. Uh, Superman, I mean, Luke Man is able to put people up in the air. Superman gets them down with his mind. He's, you know, yeah, yeah, again, he can disappear things in his mind. He can control things with his mind. So Superman has telekinesis in this movie now. Uh, Superman's like, come on, chase me. He's like, when he falls with her, but he's like, where's the girl? He's like, you know, you tricked me. He's like, she's in here, you know, and then he picks up Superman and Superman puts him in the elevator. Superman takes him out of the elevator, takes him piece of the elevator takes it to space. Uh, New World Man is able to get up because the sun comes out. And Superman, you know, proceeds the American flag. Behind him, New World Man jumps on him and they get into this lame fight. Or there's these stupid noises by New World Man who makes these 
awful noises that are just annoying to listen to, and they're fighting, and more, it's just more of him trying to cut him and slash him with his, you know, with his powerful, girly fingernails. They fight more, the, the, choreograph, the choreograph for the fights are lame, it's very slow, it's not really exciting, it's just very boring. Uh, he thinks that he takes Superman down by, Superman, you know, first just kind of using his nuclear hands or whatever, just to, just to, like, energy balls almost coming out, energy, electricity or whatever, just, <laughs> not a Superman, Superman falls, and the other one I think he's almost, <laughs> you know, you know, like the guy that's having an orgasm or something. But then Superman comes to attack, and they fight, and he chases Superman down by, yeah, by kicking him into the moon. This moon fight is lazy, by the way, because you can tell it's a set, and it's not the moon. It's just very lazily done, and then he, pull, pull, and Superman then the music there is just lame. And then after that, he goes to, and he gets lazy. He's like, what do I have to do? You know, and then, he's going to photo tell him. The little man comes over, flies her into space, and somehow she can breathe in space. She's got no spaceship, so he poops and he takes her to space, just as she is, you know, with no spacesuit on, so she can breathe in space, apparently. Um, Superman's able to, well, the sun over there, which I'm like, really? The sun could probably destroy the moon. <laughs> you know, I'm like, but anyway, the little man goes out, Superman grabs Lacey, takes her back to Earth. Grabs a nuclear man, throws him in a nuclear power plant, and basically destroys him. And, you know, at the end of the movie, he's destroyed. Uh, Superman makes a, you know, the Ruby P speech, which is kind of a nice speech, but still, by then, I just don't care. Um, yeah, and Clark Kent, of course, is better. Uh, Perry White is able to get the uh, uh, Daily Planet back, which is good, but whatever, who cares? Able to get Lacey's father, Mr. Warfield, out of business, you know. Um, then Superman, you know, gets Lex Luthor, I mean, gets Lex Luthor and his nephew Lenny. Like I said, Lenny's just annoying. And he's like, oh, dude, I got my drums. He's like, and Lex just grabs a drum, drop sticks and throws it. And then he grabs, Superman grabs the cord and he finds out, oh, it's Superman. He flies Lenny to a good boy, to like a Catholic school for boys, basically. He's like, this young man needs to be good. He's like, come on, man, what have you like? Do y'all have a drum set? <laughs> you know. And it tastes like so good joke all of a sudden. He's like, how do you feed them more? I just learned from the sun, and, you know, I, you know, everything else was just, he's pure energy, so I had to just light, light him out just to defeat him. And then he's like, come on, let's let's go back in prison. See so Superman flying at the end of the earth, I mean, to the earth, and smiling, and then the ending of the movie is there. Now, I know the movie had a lot of scenes, a lot of scenes cut out of it, but I don't care. I've heard there, someone told me in my Superman 3 review, there was a redeemed version or something like that, which this movie, which I don't care. Honestly, I just, I'm sorry, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. But, to get my final opinion on Superman 4, of course, feast. Superman 4 Cover Peace, I hate this film. I hate it. I hate it. It's a terrible movie. It is just plain awful. There's nothing good about this movie. Well, okay, things I like. Well, Christopher Reeve tries. But in my opinion, a lot of his performance, he just, he tries, but a lot of his performance I think is weak in this film. I'm sorry. Some people say this film is worth watching for, Super, for Christopher Reeve. I'm sorry, I disagree. Christopher Reeve okay, also came up with a story, and he was just doing this film because of the money with canon and that deal with canon. So he really didn't care about being Superman. As well. I can tell because a lot of times he looked like he was old and he was bored. You know, yeah. Gene Hackman, in my opinion, was the only one that tries. Even though some of his performances, I think he's over hamming it or just being really silly over the top every time of screaming. And half the time, he tries. I think Gene Hammond is the only person that tries in this movie. And the music score, it's nice to hear the music score for the Superman theme. It is. Well, I forgot to mention there was a train scene, which, it, you know, Superman goes chasing a phone booth. Doesn't, you know, the new flying scenes again, you know, 
instead of, instead of just going to use his power to stop it, he just stops the road, he just clicks in some shitty electric effects there and just stops it. And it's not exciting. And then when he tells people to stay with each other, he doesn't smile, he doesn't sound very happy. Christopher Reeve to me just sounds bored in this movie. But Gene Hatman and the music score were the only things I kind of liked about this movie. Still not good enough though. And Reed really tries, but honestly, even as Clark Kent, I didn't feel like he was bumbling or anything. Superman 3, it was fine, but in Superman 4, he should have been more bumbling and stuff. And Reed really just didn't sound, have the squeaky voice, you know, the, the awkward, the, the, voice, you know, that, that, that voice he's got, you know, that bumbling sarcasm voice he has, you know, that nerdy voice he has. He didn't have it here. Clark Kent is pretty much straight and honest in this film. You know, he's straight, he's very, Clark Kent is very serious, and so I'm like, really? Clark Kent should be different from Superman. He's just acting like Superman, he even talks like Superman half the time. This changes the voice a little bit, I'm like, mm. But, the film is also boring, the plot is stupid. Superman, you know, getting involved in the world's problems of nuclear war, taking care of nuclear war, Superman should not do that. Superman should not be involved in that, he should, he's not a god. Superman should not be involved in the world's problems. He should not be involved in the world's problems. That plot is stupid. The writing is bad. Yes, the script is terrible for this film. Like, you know, I've heard people say it, and the script, with a bad script, you can't make a good movie with a bad script. And this film has a bad script, therefore it's a terrible film. Yeah, the final result of it, it's a terrible movie. The directing and writing is bad. You have the wrong director for it. Uh, the editing, the cinematography is ugly, you know. I mean, it's very cheap looking. I heard some of this, the the, the movie's production, well, half the, the effects were horrible, but I have had, I've heard half of the budget went to Masters of the Universe or Girl of Lunge, which came out at the same time as that, as that movie. So, some of that, yeah, which can and gave for that film, I'll bet. You know, in this film, the effects are awful. Don't tell me what's the 80s, and, no, I've seen a lot of great 80s movies that have great effects in them. This movie does not have good effects in it, you know. You definitely needed Industrial Light and Magic to do this movie. Whatever the company did, they did a lazy job because the effects were horrible. Superman f filming the, you know, finding the camera was annoying. And the effects are just horrible with this film. You know, the effects are lazy. <laughs> it's just a lazy movie. I mean, it's boring. The plot is stupid. Nuclear Man is a lame villain. Yeah, Marco, good. He don't need to ever act in the movie again. Good. Don't, because you can't act, dude. You, you're not a good actor. Hmm. And what way your voice is over Gene Hammond? And Gene Hammond has a voice, and it was just so with him. You know what? You know, it sounded funny and stupid. You know, the fights were just lame. Uh, Nuclear Man's a lame villain. He's not threatening enough. You know, he looks, the vo making faces are just not, he's not intimidating enough. You know, none from Superman 2 is more intimidating. None makes grunts and noises too, but you know what? It's better done, and he comes off as more threatening. Yeah, you know, the nuclear man. Yeah, and the, the special effects, like I said, they were horrible. You know, the nods to the original films were stupid and lazy. You know, I know like the first time she was in the movie, she's doing French, speaking French. Oh, reading the book. Oh, I can Superman too. She's reading from French book. I'm like, too many nods to the original. That's the problem with this movie. You don't need nods to the original film. I know Superman the movie Superman two happened. I've seen those movies. You don't need to make nice to them. I don't mind that we make nice to the original, but I don't need it. I don't need you your nodding to the original agendas in movies. You know, or that's what that's agenda I call it. Nodding to the original. Too many nods to the original, which here is annoying. You know, I mean, I think that did that with that James Bond movie Spectre. Spectre knew that a lot. You know, references of the Bond movies. This references those two Superman films too much. And it's irritating, and the magic kiss was stupid. The flying scene from Superman in the movie that they do recreate here is stupid and lazy. And it's horrible. This film just, uh, just pisses me off. I, just, I don't want to get too angry. <laughs> but this film is just boring, honestly. Instead of making me mad, it just it bored me. It put me to sleep. I, I was bored the whole time watching this movie. I'm like, I'll probably never watch this movie again. Yeah. The best thing I'll say about it, at least it's... 90 minutes long, so it's the shortest. So at least, I'll admit, the pacing by slow times, this film isn't that long, but every inch of watching this is painful. You know, it's it's basically 90 minutes of my life taken away from me, and I can't get it back. 90 minutes, I'll never get back. But you know what? I'm never going to watch this piece of shit in a movie again. 
So Superman 4 The Quest for Peace. This movie sucks. This movie's a piece of shit. This is horrible. I hate this movie. I hate it. I hate it. With a fiery passion. If you guys like it, if people out there like it, that's fine to each his own, but I hate this film. I mean, I don't want, if you like it, if you like this film, that's cool, but I don't understand why. I would never understand. There's some people that, you know, call this a guilty pleasure. Some people, I think, defend this movie. I'm like, what's to defend about this film? What's so good about it? Please explain to me in the comments why this movie is so good. If somebody likes it, please explain to me. I don't understand what's to like about it. It's one of the worst movies ever made. It's one of the worst superhero films ever made. It definitely would be on my top three, top five of worst superhero films ever made. This would definitely be on that list, you know, for me. That's how horrible this film is. Oh, the performances, the cast. I forgot to mention that. Everybody in this film is just not good. The, the cast looks old. Margaret Kidder, she looks way too old, honestly, and she doesn't even try that much. And I thought her performance was like Christopher Reeve. It was just off. They're just old and tired. You know, Jackie Cooper with his glasses on, he looks way too old and tired. There's no more fun energy from him. He had his fun energy in other movies, and he can be funny. But here, he's just out of it. Mama Thor looks too much overweight in this film. He just, yeah, everybody, the, the, the original cast come back, that was bored. Except Gene Hackman, but, but Hackman has bad writing for his character in this film. The writing is so bad, it just doesn't do him any favors. The writing, the music score, and Reed does try, but most of the time, it was Clark Kent. He just looks bored. To me, Reed looks bored in this movie. I don't think they put no effort into this movie at all. There was no effort put in this film. Yeah, Canon, the problem was that Canon did buy this movie when some cars were gone. Superman just went bye bye. You know. As soon as that started, that was the problem. And since that was the problem, this film fell. That's why this film was a failure. $36 million. 36 million dollars. Point seven million dollars at the box office is probably the only Superman film that has flopped at the box office. Supergirl flopped too, probably even more, but this film definitely deserved to flop. Supergirl, well, that's okay. At least there were things I liked about the movie, and I, I could get more enjoyment out of that. But I hate everything about this movie. Yes, there are some things I like a little bit, but other than that, you know, oh, the flying space thing. See what I'm talking about there? Yeah, the lacing. Oh, see my space suit on. Stupid. But sitting there for a closer piece, I I hate this film. Honestly, I'm not ever gonna watch. I don't care if there's a director's cut or James cut. I don't care. What, there's nothing redeemable about this film. Nothing. It is the worst Superman film I've ever made. It's one of the worst movies and one of the worst superhero films I've ever made in my opinion. And the worst Superman film. This is in my opinion. Now, Man of Steel. This. At least to me, Man of Steel had a good story. I like Man of Steel, but I'll get to that when I review that. That'll be for Man of Steel. Film. This is Superman Four right now. But sitting there for a closer piece. I'm going to give it a thumbs down. And am I ready for the film? Since Gene Hackman does try, and the score I like, and Reeve tries at times, but the rest of them looks bored, the story of the script is so bad, the special effects, the cinematography, the editing, it's, it's all just horrible. The acting is just not very good in this movie by anybody. You know, and the story itself is just lazy and stupid. And a lot of things in the films are just stupid and make no sense. It's hate this movie, but Superman for the Crystal Peace, a thumbs down, and I'm going to give it 1 out of 5 stars. I'm never going to watch it again. 1 out of 5 stars because it is terrible. It's one of the worst Superman films ever. It's the worst Superman film ever made, in my opinion. It doesn't get a zero one for me because the music score I like and Gene Hackman I like, and Rave does try a little bit here, but not very much. But anyway, Superman 4, that's it. Oh, I threw that piece of shit over there. Good. I don't give a damn. They're all the way over there. I don't care. Anyway, let me go get that piece of crap over there. Alright guys, anyway. For my next Superman review. The next Superman movie I'm going to review. For the next Superman review, I'm sorry. I'll be reviewing the 2006 Superman film starring Brandon Ralph. And directed by Brian Singer, and that will be Superman Returns. So, yeah. yeah. I got this movie for my, for Christmas, well, it was, uh, I think it was 2006, it had to be 2006, so the movie came out. When, uh, for Christmas, one of my family members bought this movie for me on DVD. So, I didn't ask for it, I got it from my family, a family member of mine bought this movie for me, you know, on Christmas, for Christmas Eve. So, 
Yeah. But I've always been mixed on Superman Returns, so this might be a rant too. I'm not saying it will be. Maybe. But I can definitely watch this over Superman 4, the Crystal Peace. It's more watchable. But Superman Returns is next. So definitely forward to my view Superman Returns, guys. And uh, let me know what do you think of Superman 4, the Crystal Peace. Do you like it? Do you hate it? If you like it, that's fine. You know, here on my channel, it's always about difference of opinion. On my channel, there is no such thing as popular or unpopular opinions. What my channel is about is my opinion and it's about your opinions. So, you can be honest. If you hate this film, that's fine. I mean, if you love this movie, that's fine. If you like it, I don't understand why, but hey, I'm cool with it. I have no problem with it. My brother and sister's out there. You know, my whole good sister's out there. If you like the movie, don't be ashamed to tell me what you think about it. But don't leave me your comments down below. I don't care if I get this with this review. It's my video. You don't like it, don't watch. You know. But anyway, Superman for the Course of Peace. Yeah, shitty movie. Just, uh. Alright, but guys, yeah, look forward to my reading Superman Returns next. And thanks for watching. And uh, have a good day, y'all. Peace! No, I'm just kidding. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. I had to be a little funny at, at the end of the rant, but, you know. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.